Hello everyone. Welcome to NCRT audiobook chapter 5 Morphology of flowering plants. The wide range in the structure of higher plants will never fail to fascinate us. Even though the angiosperms show such a large diversity in external structure or morphology, they are all characterized by presence of roots, stems, leaves, flowers and fruits. In chapters 2 and 3, we talked about classification of plants based on morphological and other characteristics. For any successful attempt at classification and at understanding any higher plant or for that matter any living organism, we need to know standard technical terms and standard definitions. We also need to know about the possible variations in different parts found as adaptations of the plants to their environment. Example, adaptions to various habitats for protection, climbing, storage, etc. If you pull out any weed, you will see that all of them have roots, stems and leaves. They may be bearing flowers and fruits. The underground part of the flowering plant is the root system while the portion above the ground forms the shoot system. 5.1 The Root In majority of the dicotyledonous plants, the direct elongation of the radical leads to the formation of primary root which grows inside the soil. It bears lateral roots of several orders that are referred to as secondary, tertiary, etc. roots. The primary roots and its branches constitute the taproot system as seen in mustard plant. Figure 5.2a In monocotyledonous plants, the primary root is short-lived and is replaced by a large number of roots. These roots originate from the base of the stem and constitute the fibrous root system as seen in the wheat plant. Figure 5.2b In some plants like grass, monstera and the banyan tree, roots arise from parts of the plant other than the radical and are called adventitious roots. Figure 5.2c The main functions of the root system are absorption of water and minerals from the soil providing a proper anchorage to the plant parts, storing reserve food material, and synthesis of plant growth regulators. 5.1.1 Regions of the root The root is covered at the apex by a thimble-like structure called the root cap. It protects the tender apex of the root as it makes its way through the soil. A few millimeters above the root cap is the region of meristematic activity. The cells of this region are very small, thin-walled and with dense protoplasm. They divide repeatedly. The cells proximal to this region undergo rapid elongation and enlargement and are responsible for the growth of the root in length. This region is called the region of elongation. The cells of the elongation zone gradually differentiate and mature. Hence, this zone proximal to region of elongation is called the region of maturation. From this region, some of the epidermal cells form very fine and delicate thread-like structures called root hairs. These root hairs absorb water and minerals from the soil. 5.1.2 Modifications of Root Roots in some plants change their shape and structure and become modified to perform functions other than absorption and conduction of water and minerals. They are modified for support, storage of food and respiration. Tap roots of carrot, turnip and adventitious root of sweet potato get swollen and store food. Can you give some more such examples? Have you ever wondered what those hanging structures that support a banyan tree are? These are called prop roots. Similarly, the stems, of, the stems of maize and sugarcane have supporting roots coming out of the lower nodes of the stem. These are called stilt roots. In some plants such as rhizophora growing in swampy areas, many roots come out of the ground and grow vertically upwards. Such roots called nematophores help to get oxygen for respiration. 5.2 The Stem what are the features that distinguish a stem from a root? The stem is the ascending part of the axis bearing branches, leaves, flowers and fruits. It develops from the plumule of the embryo of a germinating seed. The stem bears nodes and internodes. The region of the stem where leaves are born are called nodes 
while internodes are the portions between two nodes. The stem bears buds which may be terminal or axillary. The stem is generally green when young and later often become woody and dark brown. The main function of the stem is spreading out branches bearing leaves, flowers and fruits. It conducts water, minerals and photosynthesis. Some stems perform the function of a storage of food, support, protection and of vegetative propagation. 5.2.1 Modifications of a stem The stem may not always be typically like what they are expected to be. They are modified to perform different functions. Underground stems of potato, ginger, turmeric, zaminkand, colocasia are modified to store food in them. They also act as organs of perination to tide over conditions unfavorable for growth. Stem tendrils which develop from axillary buds are slender and spirally coiled and help plants to climb such as in gouts, cucumber, pumpkins, watermelon and grape vines. Axillary buds of stems may also get modified into woody, straight and pointed thorns. Thorns are found in many plants such as citrus, bougainvillea. They protect plants from browsing animals. Some plants of arid regions modify their stems into flattened opuntia or fleshy cylindrical euphorbia structures. They contain chlorophyll and carry out photosynthesis. Underground stems of some plants such as grass and strawberry etc. spread to new niches and when older parts die, new plants are formed. In plants like mint and jasmine, a slender lateral branch arises from the base of the main axis and after growing aerially for some time, arc downwards to touch the ground. A lateral branch with short internodes and each node bearing a rosette of leaves and a tuft of roots is found in aquatic plants like Pistia and Ecornia. In banana, pineapple and chrysanthemum, the lateral branches originate from the basal and underground portion of the main stem grow horizontally beneath the soil and then come out obliquely upward giving rise to leafy shoots. 5.3 The leaf The leaf is a lateral, generally flattened structure borne on the stem. It develops at the node and bears a bird in its axil. The axillary bird later develops into a branch. Leaves originate from shoot apical meristems and are arranged in an acropetal order. They are the most important vegetative organs for photosynthesis. A typical leaf consists of three main parts, leaf base, petiole and lamina. The leaf is attached to the stem by the leaf base and may bear two lateral small leaf-like structures called stipules. In monocotyledons, the leaf base expands into a sheath covering the stem partially or wholly. In some leguminous plants, the leaf base may become swollen which is called pulvinus. The petiole help hold the blade to light. Long, thin, flexible petioles allow leaf blades to flutter in wind, thereby cooling the leaf and bringing fresh air to leaf surface. The lamina or the leaf blade is the green expanded part of the leaf with veins and venlets. There is usually a middle prominent vein which is known as the midrib. Veins provide rigidity to the leaf blade and act as channels of transport for water, minerals and food materials. The shape, margin, apex, surface and extents of incision of lamina varies in different leaves. 5.3.1 Venation The arrangement of veins and the venlets in the lamina of leaf is termed as venation. When the venlets form a network, the venation is termed as reticulate. When the veins run parallel to each other within a lamina, the venation is termed as parallel. Leaves of dicotyledonous plants generally possess reticulate venation while parallel venation is the characteristic of most monocotyledonous. 5.3.2 Types of Leaves The leaf is said to be simple when its lamina is entire or when incised, the incisions do not touch the midrib. When the incisions of lamina reach, up the mid, reach to the midrib, breaking it into a number of leaflets, the leaf is called compound. A bird is present in the axil of petiole in both simple and compound leaves but not in the axil of leaflets of the compound leaf. <coughs> the compound leaves may be of two types. In a pinnately compound leaf, a number of leaflets are present on a common axis, the rachis, which represents the midrib of the leaf as in neem. 
In palmately compound leaves, the leaflets are attached at a common point that is at the tip of petiole as in silk cotton. 5.3.3 Phyllotaxy Phyllotaxy is the pattern of arrangement of leaves on their stem or branch. This is usually of three types, alternate, opposite and whorled. In alternate type of phyllotaxy, a single leaf arises at each node in alternate manner as in china rose, mustard and sunflower plants. In opposite type, a pair of leaves arise at each node and lie opposite to each other as in calotropis and guava plants. If more than two leaves arise at a node and form a world, it is called world as in Alstonia. 5.3.4 Modifications of Leaves Leaves are often modified to perform functions other than photosynthesis. They are converted into tendrils for climbing as in peas or into spines for defense as in cacti. The fleshy leaves of onion and garlic store food. In some plants such as Australian acacia, the leaves are small and short-lived. The petioles in these plants expand, become green and synthesize food. Leaves of certain insectivorous plants such as Peacher plant, Venus flytap, are also modified leaves. 5.4 The Inflorescence A flower is a modified shoot wherein the shoot apical meristem changes to floral meristem. Internodes do not elongate and the axis gets condensed. The apex produces different kinds of floral appendages laterally at successive nodes instead of leaves. When a shoot tip transforms into a flower, it is always solitary. The arrangement of flowers on the floral axis is termed as inflorescence. Depending on whether the apex gets developed into a flower or continues to grow, two major types of inflorescence are defined, racemose and cymose. In racemose type of inflorescence, the main axis continues to grow. The flowers are born laterally in an acropetal succession. In cymose type of inflorescence, the main axis terminates in a flower, hence is limited in growth. The flowers are born in bicipital order. 5.5 The Flower The flower is the reproductive unit in the angiosperms. It is meant for sexual reproduction. A typical flower has four different kinds of whorls arranged successive on the swollen end of the stalk or pedicel called thalamus or receptacle. These are calyx, corolla, androecium, and gynoecium. Calyx and corolla are accessory organs, while androecium and gynoecium are reproductive organs. In some flowers like lily, the calyx and corolla are not distinct and are termed as perianth. When a flower has both androecium and gynoecium, it is bisexual. A flower having either only stamens or only carpels is unisexual. In symmetry, the flower may be actinomorphic, radial symmetry, or gyagomorphic, bilateral symmetry. When a flower can be divided into two equal radial halves in any radial plane passing through the center, it is said to be actinomorphic. Example, mustard, datura, chili. When it can be divided into two similar halves only in one particular vertical plane, it is zygomorphic. Example, P, Gulmohar, Bin, Cassia. A flower is asymmetric, irregular if it cannot be divided into two similar halves by any vertical plane passing through the center, as in canna. A flower may be trimerous, tetramerous, or pentamerous. When the flower appendages are in multiple of 3, 4 or 5 respectively, flowers with bracts reduced leaf found at the base of the pedicel are called bracteate and those without bracts ebracteate. Based on the position of calyx, corolla and androecium in respect of the ovary on thalamus, the flowers are described as hypogynous, perigynous and epigynous. In the hypogynous flower, the gynoecium occupies the highest position, while the other parts are situated below it. The ovary in such flowers is said to be superior, example mustard, china rose and brinzel. If gynoecium is situated in the center and other parts of the flower are located on the rim of thalamus, almost at the same level, it is, it is called perigynous. The ovary here is said to be half inferior, example plum, rose, peach. In epigynous flowers, the margin of thalamus grows upward, enclosing the ovary completely. 
and getting fused with it the other parts of flower arise above the ovary hence the ovary is said to be inferior as in flowers of guava and cucumber and the ray florets of sunflower 5.5.1 parts of a flower each flower normally has four floral whorls with calyx corolla androecium and gynoecium 5.5.1.1 calyx the calyx is the outermost whorl of the flower and the members are called sepals generally sepals are green leaf like and protect the flower in the bud stage the calyx may be gamosepalous sepals united or polysepalous sepals free 5.5.1.2 corolla corolla is composed of petals petals are usually brightly colored to attract insects for pollination like calyx corolla may also be gamopetalous petals united or polypetalous petals free the shape and color of corolla vary greatly in plants corolla may be tubular bell shaped funnel shaped or wheel shaped astivation the mode of arrangement of sepals or petals in a floral bud with respect to the other members of the same world is known as astivation the main types of astivation are valvet twisted imbricate and vexillary when sepals or petals in a world just touch one another at the margin without overlapping as in callotropis it is said to be valvet if one margin of the appendage overlaps that of the next one and so on as in china rose lady's finger and cotton it is called twisted if the margins of sepals or petals overlap one another <clears throat> but not in any particular direction as in cassia and gulmohar the astivation called imbric imbricate in pea and bean flowers there are five petals the largest a standard overlaps the two lateral petals wings which in turn overlap the two smallest anterior petals keel this type of astivation is known as vexillary or papilionaceous 5.5.1.3 androecium androecium is composed of stamens each stamen which represents the male reproductive organ consists of a stalk or a filament and an anther each anther is usually bilobed and each lobe has two chambers the pollen sacs the pollen grains are produced in pollen sacs a sterile stamen is called a staminode Stamens of flower may be united with other members such as petals or among themselves. When the stamens are attached to the petals, they are epipetalous as in brinjal, or epiphyllous when attached to the perianth as in the flowers of lily. The stamens in flower may either remain free, polyandrous, or may be united in varying degrees. The stamens may be united into one bunch or one bundle, monoadelphous. as in china rose or two bundles diadelphous as in pea or into more than two bundles polyadelphous as in citrus there may be a variation in the length of filaments within a flower as in salvia and mustard 5.5.1.4 gynoecium gynoecium is the female reproductive part of the flower and is made up of one or more carpels a carpel consists of three parts namely stigma style and ovary Ovary is the enlarged basal part on which the uh, lies the elongated tube, the style. The style connects the ovary to the stigma. The stigma is usually at the tip of the style and is the receptive surface for pollen grains. Each ovary bears one or more ovules attached to a flattened cushion-like placenta. When more than one carpel is present, they may be free, as in lotus and rose, and are called apocarpus. They are termed syncarpus when carpels are fused, as in mustard and tomato. After fertilization, the ovules develop into seeds, and the ovary matures into a fruit. Placentation: the arrangement of ovules within the ovary is known as the placentation. The placentation are of different types, namely marginal, axial. parietal basal central and free central in marginal the placentation the placenta forms a ridge along the ventral suture of the ovary and the ovules are born on this ridge forming two rows as in p when the placenta is axial and the ovules are attached to it in a multilocular ovary the placentation is said to be axial as in china rose tomato and lemon in parietal placentation the ovules develop on the inner wall of the ovary or on peripheral part 
ovary is one chambered but it becomes two chambered due to the formation of the false septum example mustard and argimon when the ovules are born on central axis and septa are absent as in dianthus and primrose the placentation is called free central in basal placentation the placenta develops at the base of ovary and a single ovule is attached to it as in sunflower marigold 5.6 the fruit the fruit is a characteristic feature of the flowering plants it is a mature or ripened ovary developed after fertilization if a fruit is formed without fertilization of the ovary it is called a parthenocarpic fruit generally the fruit consists of a whorl or pericarp and seeds the pericarp may be dry or fleshy when pericarp is thick and fleshy it is differentiated into the outer epicarp the middle mesocarp and the inner endocarp in mango and coconut the fruit is known as a drupe they develop from monocarpellary superior ovaries and are one seeded in mango the pericarp is well differentiated into an outer thin epicarp a middle fleshy edible mesocarp and an inner stony hard endocarp in coconut which is also a drupe the mesocarp is fibrous <coughs> 5.7 the seed the ovules after fertilization develop into seeds a seed is made up of a seed coat and an embryo the embryo is made of a radical and embryonal axis and one as in wheat maize or two cotyledons as in gram and pea 5.7.1 structure of dicotyledonous seed the outermost covering of a seed is the seed coat the seed coat has two layers the outer testa and the inner tegmen The hilum is a scar on the seed coat through which the developing seeds were attached to the fruit. Above the hilum is a small pore called the micropyle. Within the seed coat is the embryo consisting of an embryonal axis and two cotyledons. Two cotyledons. The cotyledons are often fleshy and full of reserve food materials. At the two ends of the embryonal axis are present the radical and the plumule. In some seeds, such as castor, the endosperm formed as a result of double fertilization is a food storing tissue and called endospermic seeds. In plants such as bean, gram, and pea, the endosperm is not present in mature seeds, and such seeds are called non-endospermous. Five point seven point two: Structure of monocotyledonous seeds. Generally, monocotyledonous seeds are endospermic, but some, as in orchids, are non-endospermic. In the seeds of cereals such as maize the seed coat is membranous and generally fused with the fruit wall the endosperm is bulky and stores food the outer covering of endosperm separates the embryo by a proteinous layer called aleurone layer the embryo is small and situated in a groove at one end of the endosperm it consists of one large and shield shaped cotyledon known as scutellum and a short axis with a plumule and a radical The plumule and radical are enclosed in sheaths which are called coleoptile and coleoregia respectively. Five point eight semi technical description of a typical flowering plant. Various morphological features are used to describe a flowering plant. The description has to be brief in a simple and scientific language and as presented in a proper sequence. The plant is described beginning with its habit. vegetative characters roots stems and leaves and then floral characters inflorescence and flower plants after describing various parts of plant a floral diagram and floral formula are represented the floral formula is represented by some symbols in the floral formula br stands for bracteate k stands for calyx c for corolla p for perianth a for androecium and g for gynoecium g under bar for superior ovary and g over bar for inferior ovary the symbol for male and the given symbol for female given symbol for bisexual plants and the given symbol for actinomorphic and the given symbol for zygomorphic nature of flower fusion is indicated by enclosing the figure within bracket and adhesion by a line drawn above the symbols of floral parts A floral diagram provides information about the number of parts of a flower, their arrangement and the relation they have with one another. 
the position of the mother axis with respect to the flower is represented by a dot on the top of the floral diagram calyx corolla androecium and gynoecium are drawn in successive whorls calyx being the outermost and the gynoecium being the center floral formula also shows cohesion and adhesion within parts of whorls and between whorls the floral diagram and floral formula in, in figure 5.20 represents the mustard plant family brassicaceae Five point nine description of some important families. Five point nine point one Fabaceae. This family was earlier called Papilionidae, a subfamily of family Leguminosae. It is distributed all over the world. Vegetative characters: trees, shrubs, herbs, root with root nodules, a stem erect or climber, leaves alternate, pinnately compound or simple, leaf base pulvinate, stipulate, venation reticulate. Floral characters: inflorescence, racemous, flower bisexual, zygomorphic, calyx, sepals five, gamosepalous, valvet, imbricate, aestivation, corolla, petals five, polypetalous, papilionaceous, consisting of a posterior, a standard, two lateral wings, two anterior ones forming a keel, enclosing a stamens and pistil, axillary aestivation. Androecium ten diadelphus anther dithicus gynoecium ovary superior monocarpellary unilocular with many ovules style single fruit legume seed one to many non endospermic floral formula percentage zygomorphic bisexual K five under bracket C one plus two plus two under bracket A under bracket nine plus one superior ovary monoadelphus economic importance many plants belonging to the family are sources of pulses gram arhar same moong soya bean edible isle soya bean groundnut dai indigo fera fibers sunhem fodder sesbania trifolium ornamentals lupin sweet pea medicine mulatti 5.9.2 solanaceae It is a large family commonly called as the potato family. It is widely distributed in tropics, subtropics and even temperate zones. Vegetative characters: plants mostly herbs, shrubs and rarely small trees. Stem: herbaceous, rarely woody, aerial, erect, cylindrical, branched, solid. or hollow hairy or glabrous underground stem in potato solanum tuberous leaves alternate simple rarely pinnately compound extipulate ex estipulate venation reticulate floral characters inflorescence solitary axillary or cymose as in solanum flower bisexual actinomorphic calyx sepals five united persistent valvet estivation corolla petals five united valvet estivation Androecium stamens five epipetalous, gynoecium bicarpellary obligately placed, syncarpus ovary superior bilocular, placenta swollen with many ovules, axil fruits berry or capsule seeds many endospermous. Floral formula given here. Economic importance: many plants belonging to this family are source of food: tomato, brinjal, potato, spice, chilli, medicine, belladonna, ashwagandha. Fumigatory tobacco ornamental petunia. Five point nine point three liliaceae, commonly called the lily family, is a characteristic representative of monocotyledonous plants. It is distributed worldwide. Vegetative characters: perennial herbs with underground bulbs, combs, rhizomes. Leaves mostly basal, alternate, linear, exstipulate, with parallel venation. Floral characters. inflorescence solitary cymose often umbellate clusters flower bisexual actinomorphic perianth tepal 6 3+3 often united into tube valvet aestivation androecium stamen 6 3+3 3, epitepalous gynoecium tricarpellary syncarpus ovary superior trilocular with many ovules axil placentation fruit capsule rarely berry seed endospermous Floral formula Br plus 
बायसेक्शुअल पी अंडर ब्रैकेट थ्री प्लस थ्री ए एडेशन ए थ्री प्लस थ्री जी अंडर ब्रैकेट थ्री इकोनॉमिक इम्पोर्टेंस मेनी प्लांट्स बिलोंगिंग टू दिस फैमिली आर गुड ऑर्नामेंटल्स ट्यूलिप ग्लोरियोसा सोर्स ऑफ मेडिसिन अलोए वेजिटेबल्स एस्पेरागस एंड कॉलची सीन कॉलची सी कॉलची कम ऑटो मनाले एलियम सेपा ओनियन प्लांट समरी फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स एग्जिबिट इनर्मस वेरिएशन इन शेप साइज स्ट्रक्चर मोड ऑफ न्यूट्रिशन लाइफ स्पैन हैबिट एंड हैबिटेट दे हैव वेल डेवलप्ड रूट एंड शूट सिस्टम्स रूट सिस्टम इज आइदर टैप और रूट टैप रूट और फाइब्रस जनरली डाई कॉटिलेडनस प्लांट्स हैव टैप रूट्स वाइल मोनो कॉटिलेडनस प्लांट्स हैव फाइब्रस रूट्स द रूट्स इन सम प्लांट्स गेट मोडिफाइड फॉर अ स्टोरेज ऑफ फूड मैकेनिकल सपोर्ट एंड एस्पिरेशन द शूट सिस्टम इज डिफ्रेंशिएटेड इन टू स्टेम लीव्स फ्लावर्स एंड फ्रूट्स द मॉर्फोलॉजिकल फीचर्स ऑफ स्टेम्स लाइक द प्रजेंस ऑफ नोट्स एंड इंटर नोट्स मल्टी सेलर हेयर एंड पॉजिटिवली फोटोट्रॉपिक नेचर हेल्प टू डिफ्रेंशिएट द स्टेम्स फ्रॉम रूट्स स्टेम्स ऑल्सो गेट मोडिफाइड टू परफॉर्म डाइवर्स फंक्शन सच एज अ स्टोरेज ऑफ फूड वेजिटेटिव प्रोपेगेशन एंड प्रोटेक्शन अंडर डिफरेंट कंडीशन लिफ इज अ लेटल आउट ग्रोथ ऑफ स्टेम डेवलप्ड एक्सोजिनसली एट द नोड दीज आर ग्रीन इन कलर टू परफॉर्म द फंक्शन ऑफ फोटो सिंथेसिस लिफ्स एग्जिबिट मार्क वेरिएशन इन दियर शेप साइज मार्जिन एपेक्स एंड एक्सटेंट ऑफ इन सीजन ऑफ लीफ प्लेट लैमिना Like other parts of plants, the leaves also get modified into other structures such as tendrils, spines for climbing, and protection, respectively. The flower is a modified shoot meant for sexual reproduction. The flowers are arranged in different types of inflorescences. They exhibit enormous variation in structure, symmetry, position of ovary in relation to other parts, arrangement of petals, sepals, ovules, etc. After fertilization the ovary is modified into fruits and ovules into seeds seeds either may be monocotyledonous or dicotyledonous they vary in shape size and period of viability the floral characteristics from the basis of classification and identification of flowering plants this can be illustrated through semi technical descriptions of families hence a flowering plant is described in a definite sequence by using scientific terms The floral features are represented in the summarized form as floral diagrams and floral formula. That's all for today. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thank you.